You know, Brandon, I think I figured out what Planet Dirty is all about. What's it all about, Christian? Tell me. Planet Dirty is this is what the show started out as, and this is what the show now is. See, Planet Dirty started out as a show about two dudes that got along and were talking about mostly horror movies, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the show about the two dudes that maybe meet up at a convention and they talk about, oh, which actor are you meeting here? Oh, dude, what's your favorite movie about this? And then you talk about horror for a little bit. Then you go, you leave and go hang out somewhere and go out to dinner. And then you talk about all the other shit after horror. That's right. Like, like, like locker room talk and uh, I don't know, random shit. Like the right. best, the best combo meal at Burger King. <laughs> I think you're 150 percent correct. I think people have gained weight from watching this show. Oh, dude, people have had heart attacks from watching this shit. People I'm are like, dead now because of this show. Okay, this is definitely the dirtiest show on the internet, and I'm proud of that. It's definitely the dirtiest show on the internet. It's also the greasiest, the filthiest, everything. Speaking of filthy, what is that you're shaking in your hand? Sour Patch Peach. Mm. Is it which the other flavors in there? It's not just peach. Just peach. No, it's not. It's all orange. They got a grape one too. I wanted to try, but I don't want to buy both, but damn good. What the hell? Oh yeah. Uh Brandon, let's get to the comments. And yeah, I've got my I've got a barks in my Teen Wolf cup. Nice. Look at that. Yeah, I was gonna get barks, but my 7 Eleven only had A and W. So oh well. That's fine. They have better looking bottles. I love those bottles. You're right. Don't they have like a weird texture? Like they, they almost feels like a football, right? It does. Yeah. It's like a. Yeah, it's like a football. The you can toss it, dude. You can to toss the yeah. pigskin. Bizarre. <laughs> dude, I'll tell you what. A and W makes some fire cream soda too. By the way. You know, I saw that today. I almost grabbed a twelve pack, but I didn't know if I should plunge right in and get the twelve pack or get a two liter. I oh, did it's so good, you know. All right, Brandon. Let me let me get to the super chat. We'll say hi to everybody in the chat, guys. There's people saying, Brandon, I haven't seen this movie. I haven't seen, but they haven't figured out Planet Dirty yet. The name of the game is to just make thumbnails and titles of shows that make people laugh. But the shows, for the most part, unless we really make it known, this is going to be like a franchise ranking or rating. The shows are just just they're whatever shows. But the idea is to come up with. People love the thumbnail. They said you just do. They say you look like a masked man or something. <laughs> they say you look like some kind of maniacal killer. Like, let me take myself out so you, everybody can see it. Watch, <laughs> dude. You you out creeped out. You out creep the judge on the thumbnail. <laughs> I do. That's a compliment uh, let me, too. Let me get to the super chats real quick. Say hey to everybody in the show, and then we'll get the show rolling. Saturn video, the ten dollars super chat. He says, whittling away at Devil Chh's health meter. The Butterman realizes that only the, another devil can defeat him. Mm. Channeling his inner Joshua Bibbity, his devil trigger awakens. The battle for the ages is on. <laughs> oh man, he always he always comes in hot with these. He I needs. He needs a special one for this one, Brandon. I think I've got the perfect video. Try as he will, try as you might. The Butterman will be naked and afraid all night. But fear not, lucky lads. You don't have to be naked and afraid when you have the new limited edition St. Patty Day's Planet Dirty shirt. You must have a four-leaf clovers up ye ass. Because these shirts are now on sale for only $16. Happy St. Patrick's Day, D lads. I can't tell you how much I love that clip so oh, it's much. It's taken on a life of its own. It's funny because Cody <laughs> Cody messaged me. He's like, you don't think that's offending anybody, is it? I'm like, bro, people think that shit's hysterical. He says, I, he goes, he goes, Christian, I'm sorry. I'm like, what's wrong, dude? Because I sent him the script, right? He's my voiceover guy. I sent him the script. He goes, Christian, I'm really sorry. I'm like, what's wrong? It keeps coming out Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally he sent me a he sent me a recording that sounded like a lepre like leprechaun and then i decided at the last second let me stick with the jamaican <laughs> what's funny is when he goes the butter man will be naked and afraid all night <laughs> it's a it's a hundred percent jamaican totally i love it it's uh, hysterical got, oh, <laughs> it's class that's why i never got rid of it oak city gamers with a 99 cent super chat thank you oak city said he subscribed a week ago 
Uh, thank you for subscribing. It's good to see. Right, Brett, let's see who we got in the chat tonight. We got CR, mm. Good Morning Chan, Oak City Gamers Mason, the horror, the King of Horror, Adrian James, Big K Movies and Games, Dave Vanderhoff, how are you? Jesse, Swarbrick, Jaden Christopher, Saturn Video, of course, Saturn Video, sir, Ann Liv, CR, Justin Smith, Sam Thomason, Summertime Blues, Witch Hunter, JG Michael, uh, G uh, Garrett's in the chat. Born to be red. What's up, Garrett? Uh, who else we got? Quentin. How are you, Quentin? So uh, we got a lot of people here, Brad. We got a, a lot of the usuals. We have a lot of the diehards. Fantastic. The diehards are here. Corey, how are you? Corey Conway. Good to see everybody. Josh. Josh is always like that name that pops up. Yeah. That's what makes the show great. Look at that. Look at that profile picture. I love it. Um. Anyway, so welcome everybody. Welcome. Please drop a like. This is uh the the nothing but trouble root brewski and chill show. There are no rules tonight. Uh yeah. Brandon, I have the first topic I want to talk to you in the chat about. So two nights ago, me and Sydney were kind of winding down, you know. And Sydney was like, Hey, you want to put on a movie? I'm not super tired. Yeah, I said, let's, let's, let's put on a movie. Yeah. And said he's flipping through Max, which I still, I hate that. Don't you hate it? That's just a stupid name. Like, it is. Why, why would you get rid of the brand of H? In HBO, it's, like one of the most legendary brands? It is. Max by itself just sounds weak and stupid. I almost want to unsubscribe from the service, but uh, it's just bizarre. Yeah. I don't get it. It's a, it's a really stupid change. I hate it. So anyway, we, we, we get on. We get on Max and said he's just kind of flipping through and she gasps. She audibly gasps. She goes, oh, and I'm 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 on my phone, maybe editing a short or something for YouTube, but doing my thing. And I was like, what? What? And she goes, we have to watch this. I was like, what? What, do you, what is it? I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see the TV. And um, she goes, the return to Oz. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, let's let's put that on. I said, I said, I think I remember Brandon doing a video on that. And he said it was like a fever dream. And she goes, you haven't seen this? I said, I, I don't think I have. If I have, it's been a long time. She goes, Christian, this movie like ruined me. I was like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, what do you, I, I, cause sometimes I said, oh, you know, we're Brandon. You never know. I think Brandon is perpetually high. So maybe, you know, <laughs> the red light down in, uh, you know, True. fifth district makes him high. I don't know. So she goes, no, let's watch this. Let's watch this. I actually, and I went back and I watched your video today. I even think you undersold how fucked up that movie is. Oh, yeah. I want people to watch it. I want people's kids to watch it. So Okay, so here's here's two things that aren't even on the nose freaky. It's just in your face, effed up freaky. Mm -hmm. The guys who are rollerbladers and they got the long arms. The wheelers. Like, Fuck. The wheelers. Dude. Could you imagine it's, it's late at night and you see the shadow of those things and you hear that... <laughs> laugh yeah. oh my god dude that's fucking terrifying and then when she oh, goes yeah. behind the door and the one is screaming at her like we're gonna get holy shit yeah dude the masks they wear are fucking freaky as hell too dude and here's the other thing that's just not even remote it's not even on the nose freaky it's absolutely just freaky is when the queen woman takes her in that back room Oh, yeah. And the heads are behind the glass, and she legitimately just picks heads that she wants to wear. But, Brandon, I was watching the scene. Dorothy is looking at the woman, and she's got a head she's holding. She goes, do you like this one? And she's like, oh, uh, yeah, you look you look pretty. If you look behind her, the the heads on the, on the, in the, in the cannabis spaces, their eyes are moving, and they're looking at her. Dude, it's fucking terrifying. It's not even, it's not even on, it's not even like like pseudo scary dude it's just that's an 824 movie it is it's dude it's i need to have that on 4k i know that is a freaky movie dude i got the special edition disney blu-ray of it it was like a very limited release i got it and it's a fantastic uh transfer but i definitely want to see that movie on 4k so, i yeah, don't dude, see that, it happening though yeah i feel like i feel like that's a movie i, I don't know if that was on disney plus either we watched on Max. That's so, weird that it's on Max too, man. That's very bizarre. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Disney's like, we just don't want this on our platform. We don't want it on our platform. I don't know. But dude, fuck. Yep. It's creepy shit. If I'd have saw that as a kid, it definitely would have ruined me. No doubt in my mind. 
everything about that movie, even the tone of it, like the beginning where she goes to the insane asylum and like you see the doctor with the big machine. It's you hear the kids shit. screaming like it's really a effed up movie. It's really screwed. I can't believe Disney made that movie. It's so good, too, though. It's like it's a, it's definitely a masterpiece in itself. Very well made. Story's good. The acting's good. The the effects are fantastic. It's very never ending story quality. Yeah, but I just can't believe they made a movie that dark. Dude. But then again, the 1980s for Disney, where it was a fucking wasteland. Yeah, like Watchers in the Woods and yeah, Black Cauldron and all that shit. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much, Oak City Gamers, with another do- uh, 99 cent super chat. Let me give you a quick fan favorite. With all these nicknames, everyone that I accumulate, I accumulate like three pounds of fat. Yep. Um. Let's see, Brandon. Let's get to some questions. This is the audience show, the root beer and root brewski and chill show. Blu-ray Attic thoughts thoughts on Blumhouse making a new Blair Witch Project movie. Brandon, I've got some strong opinions. Me too. We'll let you go first. Um, I don't think it's so much of the Blumhouse itself. Well, I knew a studio was going to get their hands on it eventually. I guess it would probably Blumhouse makes sense because they're the the cool kid in the class right now. But um, I just don't like Blumhouse. I think they're luke- lukewarm at best. Uh, I think they're pretty mediocre. But anyways, my problem is you're never gonna, you're never ever gonna capture the magic of the original Blair Witch. It's never, nothing's ever gonna be as scary. Right. It's never gonna capture the zeitgeist in the same way. It's just you're, I don't know, man. The original film, the 1999 film, scares me to this day. I know how they made it. I know it's fake. That movie made me fear the woods, and I we've all grown up around woods our whole lives. But that movie is like specifically made you fear the woods in a really primordial way that other stuff doesn't to this day. If I'm in the woods, I think about that movie. I told you this before. I think I went to our bound in 2002. So three years removed from the movie. And the whole time we were out there along the swamps in those deep, dark woods, I was thinking about that fucking movie. Mm -hmm. It's like a visceral primordial fear that you're not going to be able to recapture, especially with the polish of Blumhouse. Like that's a joke. It's it's gonna die. It's it's gonna come out, and people are gonna forget about it. That's what's gonna happen. That's what I think. That's my short rant about it. That's all I really got to say. It, yeah. It, it's 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 just weird that we're at the point where we're remaking found footage movies, isn't it? Just I mean, let's just look at it. Let's look at it from that aspect. We're remaking found footage movies. Yeah. You see, I kind of appreciate what. And I can't, I can't appreciate what Eli Roth did. Like, obviously, he wanted to redo Cannibal Holocaust, mm-hmm. but he did it in in a form of like a movie, and it's not called that, and it's clearly inspired by that. No, yeah. I can get down with that, but it's like weird. Like we're, we're like we're remaking the Blair Witch. Like what? Yeah, like the whole the whole pitch of that movie was this is real. How do you really do that again? And, and, and that, that's like, not. Yeah. I'm just, that that's another thing. It's just like, you know, for the younger people in the chat, you have to understand when this movie, when the original came out, it wasn't like a a movie came out. No, no, no. It it, it ruined people because it was sold like it was legitimate, and because the internet was pretty uh uh young at the time, it wasn't like people didn't live on the internet. People might have gone on the internet once or every once a month. Yeah, you know, and it, 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 the websites dedicated to the movie all sold it like it was real. Oh, they yeah. they made a documentary called Sticks and Stones where it's a pseudo document. I mean, it's great. Yeah, and I, you know, Brent, I tell this story all the time. When I was a kid, my mom, when I would walk down the aisle and I would gra- go to look at the Blair Witch VHS, my mom would actually stop me. She goes, "No, no, no, don't mess with that." Yeah, like I think she had a tinge of thinking. That was like something real. It was it was incredible. I think people thought it was a snuff film that they somehow got the because I didn't know it was fake until like a year after the movie came out. Yeah. I thought it was legitimately real for a long time. So that's how much they had everybody fooled back then. Do you think? And this is still on the Blair Witch topic. I love Book of Shadows. I think you love Book of Shadows too. Great Absolutely. fucking sequel. Great soundtrack. Love all that jazz. Love it. I feel like if Blumhouse, if that movie hadn't existed and Blumhouse did that sort of take and connected it to the original film in the same way of it being a meta there at the location where the movie was filmed, that would be a good Blumhouse movie. 
I could see. And, and they may be, look, they may be doing that. They might. We don't know what they're doing. I mean, I don't. They never said if it was going to be a found footage movie or nothing like that. They haven't said that. And look, I'll be on. I, I said this before. I recorded a video with Garrett a few days ago, and we actually discussed this. It wasn't the topic of the video, but we just kind of talked about it, and I left it in. If it's granted, if when this movie comes out, if I see it and it's good, I'll have no problem saying I was wrong, and I'll I will eat my words. I, and I know you feel yeah. the same way. I, I want to feel the same good. way. But don't you almost wish that Blumhouse would make their own Blair Witch metaphorically, blaze their own trail, have their own original movie, like because they can do it. Like Jason, I know that Jason Blum can spot talent. Otherwise, of course he can. The guy's not an idiot. You know, it's just now it's like, what is Blumhouse becoming? That's my worry. Are they just going to be we're going to they're like they're almost like the hammer of today. Right. It's just Dracula Frankenstein, Dracula Frankenstein, right. mommy. Like, well, let's redo all of it again and again. Yep. You know. Yeah, I guess this is the quickest way to make as much money as possible. Right. They're just buying IPs or licensing IPs temporarily left and right. Like Halloween. I'm sure they, they would get their hands on Friday the 13th if they could. I missed. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, though. I wish I would see we would see more original content versus IPs that already exist. And I think the issue, Brandon, right now is their 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 legacy stuff that they're doing. They have their leg. They have their legacy stuff they're doing. But let's look at the original stuff that they've been doing lately. A lot of it's not f taking off into like in a big big way. A lot of it's just kind of mediocre. I can't speak for imaginary or, or night swim, but everybody that I know personally that saw both of those movies told me don't even bother. It's just not good enough. I mean, that's what I'm hearing about Blumhouse right now. Yeah. They're like their original stuff that they're doing. It's just not good enough. And I think that's another issue. You know, if they were fire, if they were firing on these original ideas, it, it just kind of be like, oh, cool, man, because we can get this from Blumhouse and then we can watch and we can get, you know, their legacy stuff. And you never know. Every now and again, one of their legacy things might end up being pretty cool. Uh, night. Yeah. People are saying imaginary sucked. Night swims. A lot of everybody I talked to said that those movies weren't any good. Hmm. Now, if people in here liked it, I'd, I'd be willing to I'd, I'd like to hear their voices. But I, I don't know, Brian. I just feel like uh, I just feel like Blumhouse is. Maybe they've peaked. In terms of like their uh, they've they've platinum dooned themselves, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Maybe they had their time and now they're just not the cool kids anymore. They're not cool anymore. Yeah, I mean, do you think the Halloween trilogy was a detrimental thing for them in the long run? It, it could be. I mean, I mean, I, I look at. I I mean, I love I love one of those films a lot, Halloween Kills. But I feel like I wonder if Halloween that trilogy. Just burned everybody out of Blumhouse because they came so quickly. You know what I mean? As stupid as that sounds, I mean they did Paranormal Activity too, right? The whole series. Well, I mean, I mean Blum Blum kind of Orin Pelly made Paranormal Activity, right? Hook or that's Orin Pelly's creation, right? Blumhouse got involved to help promote the movie and distribute the movie and produce the movie, I think. Um, and then they were involved going forward. But so I'll give I'll give credit to Blum. You know, I'll give credit to Blum with a little bit with keeping paranormal activity going high. But I mean, we have we have Oren Pelly to thank for that franchise because he made the such a. Yeah, I remember when that came out, too. I mean, people didn't think it was real, but it scared the shit out of people. People were running out of my theater for that movie. It was funny. It was actually funny shit. I don't know, Brandon. I think maybe Blumhouse just isn't the cool kids. Who's the cool kid now? Is it A24? Are they the cool kid now? You know what? I, honestly, I think it's Shudder. I mean, I'm serious. Because to see them coming out with stuff in the theaters, and it's fucking awesome. Like, Brandon, I don't I don't know if you've seen Night with the Devil yet. When I say, I, when I say right hand, that's my left hand, right hand to God, you're going to love this fucking movie. I, I, I'm telling you, you're going to love. You Did you watch late night talk shows when you were a kid? I did. Oh, dude! A lot of them. It, it's that's all I gotta say. Late Night with the Devil so far is my favorite horror movie this year, hands down. I believe it. Away. The trailer enough. I love the trailer, so I'm like, I'm gonna love this fucking movie. I just didn't get a chance to go see it in the theaters. 
I don't think it's anywhere around my area. I think I'd have to drive to like Orlando to see it here for some reason. Um, all right, Brian, let's get into some questions. What is your all-time favorite slasher movie to both of you? I know your answer, Brandon. Jason Lives. Jason Lives. Yeah. As lame as that makes me. I don't know. Jason Lives. What do we, what do we got now? What is that? Dude, Jolly Ranchers? These have totally flipped my lunch tray tonight. These are the best candies what I've had they? in a long time. Jolly Rancher gummies, very berry. They're, they're really like sweet? Giant, they're like giant kids' fruit snacks. They're not too chewy. Do you like the sour candies I like, I like sour candies but um these are just sweet i haven't heard Fantastic. of this before very nice i don't know brand i think mine's either G uh freddy's revenge or mm. friday the 13th the final chapter i'll go with freddy's revenge both good choices um damn no valentine yeah yeah is that still in your top 10, Brandon, or have or have you reconsidered? It's still in my top 10. <laughs> it's actually gone up. <laughs> I'm telling you. The fact that that movie hasn't caught on and developed a huge cult following is a travesty to me. An absolute travesty. Brandon, can you promise me? I know you're you're a uh, you're a, a bigger family now. You got two kids. Which, how, mm. by the way, how, how is everything? Is How's Shanna doing? Is, every, is everybody doing good? Shanna's good. She's healing up a bit faster than last time from the C-section. The baby's good. She's fiery. The baby is a lot more feisty than her sister was uh, when she was a baby. Isabella loves being a sister. And uh, besides do you call the her, intense do you call lack her of Izzy? sleep, I'm good. Do you call her Izzy for short? I do not. No. She doesn't like it either. Like some of our relatives have tried to call her Izzy, and she, she corrects them. She's like, my name is Isabella. So says like, the whole okay. thing. She loves the whole thing. What and 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 the new peanut. What what what's this one's name? I can't remember if you told me or not. This is Mia. Mia. Well, I'll hold her up in a few minutes. She's was there ever right a now. thought of, of naming her after you and calling her Brenda? No. That's a good idea, though. Maybe for the third one, I will do that. Oh, so there's gonna be a third one. There's probably a third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I don't think Shannon is ready eighth. to have that conversation. She's glaring at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, Brian. I'm happy for you, man. I'm glad everything's going good, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Larry, right, bro, let's get back to the chat. Uh, thoughts on Saw 11 and the crow being delayed. Why you do that, Brandon? Let me go refill my uh, my uh, root beer. I'll be right back. The, you right. got the floor, my brother. I got the floor. All right, so I'll address... The thoughts on Saw 11 and the crow being delayed first, Ian, if you don't mind. Uh, Saw 11, I'm glad that Saw is moving forward. Uh, do we know for sure if it's going to be another midquel or is it going to be like a straight sequel to the final chapter or what's going on with Saw 11? I'm not really sure. I haven't really heard anything else about it besides the initial announcement. But on that note, I have not seen Saw X still. I spoiled the the ending scene for myself intentionally. I looked it up on YouTube. I don't know if it's an ending scene or if it's a post credit scene, but I loved it. Spoiler alert for anybody in the chat who hasn't seen Saw X. I won't, I, I won't say it, but I was very pleased with that small scene. I haven't seen the rest of the film, but I've heard nothing but good things from pretty much everybody. But again, the fact that it's a mid cool taking place between Saw 1 and 2, I'm just sort of, I don't want to say I roll my eyes at it, but it's like, why... How does it justify his existence? How does it play out into the grand story of things? I've heard it doesn't really... If Saw X didn't exist, nothing would really change about the franchise, and that really bugs me. Sequels this late in the game, especially a midquel, I want it to justify its existence to an overall grand plot. Like, if you were going to give a Saw X and have it take place between Saw 1 and 2, have it change the game and flip everybody's lunch trays, blow everybody's minds, and have it change the course of Every other movie in the franchise, even the events after the final chapter and predating Jigsaw and um, Spiral, do something to change the whole game. And apparently they didn't really do that. It was just sort of a standalone thing, which is cool. But I ask myself, what's the point? <clears throat> uh, Christian knows what I'm talking about. Give me give me the quick thoughts on the crow, because I'm assuming I just heard you talking about Saw. I did, yeah. The crow, I could care less. Okay. I didn't like the trailers. I'm not a fan of the look. 
I think it's a travesty to the comic. I'm 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 gonna be that guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um. First of all, we have 109 people in here. Please just drop a like so I can shut up about it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I've been pretty vocal, Brandon. I was not a big fan of Saw X, and it was weird because I feel like I'm on an island with that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean no disrespect. Of course, my opinion is literally worth nothing more than anybody else's, Brandon. As they say, an opinion is the lowest form of human knowledge, whatever whatever the expression is. Yeah. Um, so I mean no disrespect when I say this. I'm watching a movie where a woman in her 50s has on a wig where she looks like Coconut Head from Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. And people are saying this is the greatest Saw sequel of all time. And I'm just like, what? Like, what? What are you talking I, I, I The traps were cool. Don't get me wrong. And Shawnee is a beautiful woman. It's not like, it's just, can we not? I'm going to get shit for this. I'm not saying Spiral is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's not spoiler alert, but I mean, Brandon, meet me halfway. At least they're trying something different and moving forward. I don't, here's the thing, Brandon, we all love nostalgia, right? We do. Mm -hmm. We love it. We love talking about, we love talking about the way chicken nuggets tasted in 97 compared to 2024. We love talking about Wayne's world. We love this and love that, but you know what, Brandon, we have to move forward too. I agree. And when you got a franchise that takes place in the 24, first century mm -hmm. right are we in the 22nd we're in the 20 we're the 21st, 21st. Yeah. when we're in the 21st century a franchise that is in this century started in the century how about we move forward instead of backwards right yeah um you're talking about as far as the mid cool thing goes like there were, really it, was it, no reason why they couldn't make a sequel to final chapter i mean it didn't have to be a mid cool like it's the it's the 10th movie in the mainline franchise do something crazy like make it go supernatural for all we care actually bring tobin bell back like i don't again as i was just saying when you walked back in i don't i haven't seen saw x so i can't really speak towards it all the way but i don't like movies that don't justify their existence well here's the thing brand apparently it did justify its existence why because everybody went to go say it beside you and people love it but but here's the thing brandon it's too black and white for me. I mean, Jigsaw comes across as so such a sympathetic wrestling term, baby face. Like he's yeah. such a good guy in the movie. I like that. What the, f who, who's right or wrong in this shit? Wait a minute. He's a vigilante killer. He's killing, he's killing crooks. He's killing drug addicts. He's killing this man. This is fucking creepy. He's yeah. going against this guy that runs an insurance agency. Man, this is like this is some risque stuff. What is this one about? He's going after a a, a he's going after bad guys. Mm -hmm. so, so so it's just not for me. He's become the anti-hero, you know what I mean? Where he shouldn't it's be, too, probably. It's too black and white for me. Anyway, let's move on, Brandon. Let's get to some other questions. Um, let's see. Let me find a good question. Um Um, excuse me. Do you think late night with the devil will get stuck on streaming forever? Oh no. Um, RLJ has a great partnership with the shutter late night with the devil will most out of undoubtedly get a Blu-ray, probably a steel book as well. Um, let's see, Brandon. Uh, no, I, I, I don't disagree with you, JG, because no one gives a shit about Saw without Tobin Bell. Sorry, but I'm being bluntly. Now, it's not something I disagree with. I'm saying I just want to move. Sometimes when something's not even that old, it's just like I'd prefer to move forward. You know, that's just that's just my taste. That's the, obviously I shouldn't be writing Saw films because I would not be successful. But that doesn't mean I still can't have my, you know, two cents on the matter. Well, one more that's thing. I'm was getting it, everybody was was satiated when Tobin Bell was dead <laughs> and he was showing up in flashbacks and stuff like for the rest of the franchise past saw three, everybody was okay with that. Continue doing that and give us a sequel to final chapter where Hoffman escapes and, and, you know, Dr. Uh, Gordon I, has to go I, after him. Give us that story. Yeah. You know, yeah, you could Brandon, but here's the, here's like, I still have problems with that. How much shit went on in this period of time that we're still learning about? I mean, this guy never slept and he oh, no. knows every, I mean, here's the thing. 
here's the thing about here's the thing about jigsaw that's kind of laughable the husband and wife kill the baby because they're they're both sleeping the mama wakes up and she kills the baby blames it on the dad this happens in their bedroom. Tobin Bell's creepy peeping Tom ass is staring out of his window mm-hmm. into the people across the street just watching this shit. Like, it's like, come on, man. You got a beautiful smoking hot wife at the house and your peeping Tom ass is staring out the window watching another couple. Mm. You saw Jill. She was smoking hot. And you're, and you're looking out the window. I mean, what the fuck? fuck are we talking about here it's all ridiculous brandon it's <laughs> oh man <clears throat> all horror aside twister 4k confirmed for june brandon did you see they're putting out twisters the sequel yeah i think it's gonna actually be pretty good i hope it's fun i don't think i'll see it in theaters it's not gonna connect to the first oh, film i'm sure like at all you're not Which gonna is see fine. The, Brandon, I got news for you. You're not going to see the inside of a movie theater for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> when Dune Messiah comes out, I'll go see that in theaters, dude. Oh, uh, man. Any thoughts on The Grudge? Which one, Jonathan? The original? Uh, Gring, what's it called? Gringo? Uh, um, Juan. Juan. Uh, I'm not a fan of the American Grudge at all. I can tell you that. I'm not really a fan of any of those movies or The Ring, but I haven't seen Ringu or Zhuan, so I can't really speak to those either. Did you guys there see were... that? Go ahead, Brent. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say there's the scary moments in those movies, but I'm just not really a fan of those movies in general. Yeah. But yeah. Did you guys see Terrifier 3 wrapped up filming today? Mm-hmm. Brandon, I got news for you. Terrifier 3 is not going to be as good as Terrifier 2. It can't because he's going to try to live up to it. There's too much expectation now. That doesn't mean it's not going to be good, Brandon. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to tell you something else. I think making this a Christmas movie is a little annoying. I I I I think it's it's it feels doesn't it feel forced? I think I like Christmas horror movies. I love the the ambiance and the coziness of it and the setup. But I think Terrifier is so tied to Halloween now that it's from here. How do you put him back into Halloween? Like, are you well, gonna go back I'm, to the Halloween setting in part four? Like, I don't know. It just it well, seems weird. It's not really. It doesn't really have competition in the broad sense. I feel like because even if there was another Exorcist movie coming out this Halloween it doesn't matter because like that's going to be more of a general audience that would see that the, the horror fans will go see terrifier in October. Yeah. So will I, they yeah. will, I mean, I'm not, it's, I hate to be petty or pessimistic about it. I don't know. I'm, I'm not mad or upset really, but I'm just kind of like, it's gotta be a Christmas movie. Okay. Like, are we going to get a, an Easter is terrifier four going to be an Easter movie? <laughs> You know, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't think it needs any more gimmicks than it already has. Well, I thought, I thought he was tied in the story to the holiday. So why is he out and about at the Christmas time? I don't That's know. what I don't understand. I thought he was sort of like a spirit of how, I don't know. Here's Maybe the I'm other question. Here's the other question I have for you. Do you think it's going to outgross? Cause you know, they're going to shove this in theaters. Mm. Do you think it's going to outgross too? I think so for sure. I think everybody, but the curiosity factor is going now. It that's is. What got, that's what got people in for the two, right? I think people are expecting such a bloodbath now that all the, I guess you could say, normies out there are going to go see it with all their friends. This, you see, I, I see. I don't year. know. I, I got to push back on that a little bit. I don't know that they are. They got their fix of it last year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if it's going to. I don't know if there's going to be that broad curiosity oh shit have y'all heard about this crazy movie they say you don't have to see part one it doesn't matter they say it's the nastiest movie i don't know if it's gonna have that is my yeah see this is a this is a perfect segue christian because you've touched on this in a recent video you did we've talked about this before but this situation really burns my ass because when hatchet 2 was coming out 
because of the success of Hatchet 1. Remember, he was going to get a limited AMC release in all the AMC theaters for Hatchet 2 unrated. And I think the day it was supposed to come out, they pulled it. And they totally fucked any kind of mainstream appeal that franchise could have gotten. And we could have seen a Victor Crowley mainstream surge if they had not pulled that theatrical distribution. Now, why Art the Clown has earned it and Victor Crowley didn't, I don't know. Right place, right place, right. It, it really is the perfect storm. You know, Brandon, I was going to make a video about this, and I probably still will. Hatchet walked so Terrifier can run, and you'll never convince me otherwise. Yep. I mean, I'm glad he's still making those movies, sort of. Like he's, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to make a part five. But I like, need Adam Green to... You know, Brent, I heard that I heard Shutter bought Holliston. Mm. The TV show he did. Have you seen that? I haven't, but I've heard good things about it. Oh my God. It's so addicting. It's a sitcom about two guys that work for D Snyder at a local uh they do your job. Yeah. That's what they do for a living. Right. And they're horror fans and they're trying to make their own horror movie. It's hysterical. <laughs> Tony Todd shows up, Kane Hodder shows up in it. Shutter bought it, and people are begging for season three. And I don't know why they haven't filmed it yet, but I'm telling you, Brandon, Hatchet and Terrifier, they're not the same movie, but they are. Yeah. It's over-the-top gore, yep. silly characters, and it's very much pop culture oriented. During the 2000s, what was big? New metal. Yep. What's the opening of Hatchet? This is the new <laughs> shit. Yes. What's popular right now? Synthwave. 80 yeah. synth it's right. massive what yep. starts out terrifier 2 you're right the midnight 80 synth wave yep they're the same fucking movies what's the slasher character about over the top gore ripping people open cartoonish violence all that now, shit this is not a slight on terrifier or damien i think they're super i love damien leone super talented he is the right man right now Mm -hmm. Adam Green was doing all this stuff already. I know it's, that's what I'm saying. It burns my ass because Victor Putting Crowley my, should be where Arthur Clown is. He should, and it breaks he my should. heart. And I love, I love, I, I, I mean this. I'm not trying to be ridiculous. I think I, to me, Hatchet Two is that Hatchet is two. the best of whatever this genre is we're talking about. Whatever this is, this low budget, over the top, parody esque slasher movie we're talking about. Right? It's like the self-aware slasher era. The self -aware the Hatchet the 2, to me, pound for pound, is the absolute best movie of this specific category. I agree. Because I agree. Adam got it. He did. You put all your put you put all your horror characters and the icons is a strong word. So I'm not, I'm not gonna call Daniel Harris an icon, but you put all these horror characters in there, you don't overuse them. And make them the focal point because then it's way too distracting. Mm. What happens in Hatchet 2? Do you remember when the camera's panning and you see Bill Johnson from Texas Chainsaw 2, Lloyd Kaufman? Mm. Uh, you see all these horror characters. All right, all down. everybody. Yep. And the humor is insane. The humor oh, is so insane. Damn good. When, when Tony Todd's assistant has cookies and he's about to ask him to do this job and they stop, you got milk? No milk. <laughs> so you want to see these cookies with the milk? Just damn, damn it. Go see if we got some. Dude, Todd is hysterical in that movie. His his fucking shit he's doing to the Leatherface dude is fucking hysterical. Dude, it's him as Reverend Zombie. Tony got it. So he, he got that character so good. I, I'm not trying to be facetious. It sounds like Brandon agrees with me. As much as I love Terrifier, and I fucking love Terrifier. Mm. Two. And one. I like one as well. Hatchet 2 is the best movie of this category oh, we're talking for about. Sure. For sure. Oh, yeah, for fucking sure. Do you remember the very... I don't want to spoil it, but you remember just Tony Todd, his demise? He just... He, he realizes Victor isn't dead. He goes, oh, fuck. Yep. Dude, he, I don't want to spoil it because I think I saw somebody say, I haven't seen any of these movies yet. That's the greatest and goriest. Now, Brandon, I would say that that ending rivals anything in... Terrifier too. Gore oh, for wise. sure, for sure. Even in one, when he rips that old woman's head open, why? Just that grabs her by so the mandible. Gnarly. I love that Dude, shit, Brandon. Yeah. It walked so Terrifier could run. No doubt in my mind. It did. No doubt in my mind. 
Adam team. Green, Adam Green, Adam Green needs his flowers big time. He does. He needs to make Hatchet Five, and it needs to go. It needs to be a Shutter movie, and they need to just put it in theaters like they do all these other movies. Brandon, that will get you to go to the theater. Oh yeah, for you sure. Will, you will call in sick. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You know, I don't know, Brandon. I, I'm I'm excited for Terrifier three, but I also feel like um, I'm excited, but not it's not the same. What no. are we gonna go see this Halloween? Like, what's coming out this October? What chat? A chat. Got 126 people in here, guys. Tell me, what's coming out? What's coming out this Halloween? Because I don't even know. Is it is it Alien or is that the summer? Alien is August. So summer, you know, I don't think anything's coming out this Halloween. There's got to be something though, right? It's not exorcist. Oh yeah. Nosferatu comes out Halloween time. I think it's December. Dude, that sh oh, damn it. Is it really? Let me look this up real quick. Yeah. His was telling me it's December. 2024. Let's see. I know Blu-ray attic. I'm hoping Adam's got some stat. I love how that's, that's not coming out till next year, though, isn't it? I don't give Brandon. Can I be can I be dead honest with you? No, I don't you give I don't give a rat's ass about a musical with Lady Gaga in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a full on jukebox 15 song musical like they're not even joking. Like, I, I don't it's even, a little weird. Like I wasn't a huge fan of the first Joker. I thought it was a little bit uh, pretentious and intentionally artsy. Like they knew what they were doing when they made like anyways. People love was, that shit, but it's it's not it's not a superhero movie either. It's, it's just it's like a it's like a what do you call it? What do you call them? Character studies? Is that what yeah. they call movies? Where it's just like watching like a person lose their mind, right? Um, I thought the trailer looked interesting, but the I feel like the the musical aspect. I don't mind musicals; they're cool when they're done right, especially jukebox musicals. But like, I rather focus on the lore and the story versus a musical. Like, I don't know why there's so much lore to mine there. I don't know why they would waste time with musical stuff. Well, let's let's just let's just let's just let's just get it out. The greatest there. I mean, the character of Joker. How many goddamn times are they going to do it? I mean, at, at a certain point, it's like, do, what 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 are these comic book people doing? Is there no new characters that they've written? Like, is there not another is there not another character? Like they haven't made a movie of yet, or is it all? This is basic. It's just like the Universal Monsters. They keep redoing it. But this weird thing, Brandon, is they redo these movies. There's no there. I still feel like Heath Ledger's Joker's brand new to me. Like it's not, but it's like I mean, I mean, Jesus, how how often are they going to redo these characters? Sp there's Dude. been three Spider Mans. There's yes. been three Spider Mans in two decades. You know what's crazy, dude? On a live action on a live action level. From 1989 to 2008, we just had Jack Nicholson prior to Heath Ledger, right? Heath Ledger comes along, and then suddenly we have Heath Ledger. Then we got Leto. Then we got Jaquin Phoenix. Then we got the guy in the Batman, whatever his name is. It's just we've had so many Jokers in the last 10 years all of a sudden. But at one point, we just had Jack Nicholson, and I was happy with that. Jack Nicholson live action and Mark Hamill's animated version. I think Jack Nicholson is probably still my favorite Joker. I hear a lot of people say Mark Hamill is the best Joker. Probably the best laugh. You know what I mean? My guess. But there's something about Nicholson because it's just Nicholson. Oh, he's a mafia. Like, it's just him. Like, you, you can't. And that's so. I hate to say comic book accurate because there's so many versions of the comic books. But the Joker was a gangster. You know, right. that makes sense. That's why, on some levels, Jared Leto's Joker is way more accurate than a lot of other interpretations. But I'll I won't skin on my soapbox about that tonight. <laughs> uh, I hear you. Saw I got delayed, twenty twenty five. Brandon, what about Beetlejuice two, Iron Wolf? I'm excited about that. I'm very it's, excited about Beetlejuice two. I, I can't get a grip on you. I really can't because me. If you yeah, because if you were to ask me, Christian, name two movies, Brandon. Give me a movie Brandon's excited about and give me a movie Brandon's not excited about. 
if I was going to place a dollar down, I would have said Brandon's excited for Alien. Yes. He's not excited for Beetlejuice. That's what I would have said. But you're reversed. I'm ecstatically excited for both. Uh, more so Alien, I think, because I'm more of an but Alien I, you, guy. You keep, you keep feeling like you're going to get kicked in the balls, though, with Alien. I That's do. what we talked the last time. That's what you sound. You're like, it's just there's no way. There's no way. Here's the deal. Let's talk about Alien for a second, if you don't mind. The trailer, the teaser trailer, it's it didn't win me over. But I'm hopeful that the movie is good. I have confidence in Fede Alvarez. He's telling me there's a lot less CGI than I'm letting than I think there is. So I'm hoping he's not lying. The fact that the story takes place officially between Alien and Aliens and has officially been confirmed to act as a connective tissue is very cool to me. It's not just going to be a standalone one-off story. It's going to be a connective tissue between the films. Uh, apparently, they're even going to sprinkle in bits of... You know how, where I stand on the prequels. I'm not a fan of Prometheus. I'm barely a fan of Covenant. But apparently, this is going to acknowledge those films' existence. So I'm like, that's that's got me a little bit excited because now I'm really curious. I think the franchise is in good hands. The fact that Hulu was going to push this out on streaming... And they were like, no, wait a minute. This is how this has to go theatrical. That gives me hope. And and it seems like Hulu doesn't do that a whole lot. I mean, you look at their history, they kind of dump a lot of stuff on streaming. Yeah. Because they've had some movies. I thought, what are you doing? Like, I don't know if you liked Prey. I think you had some serious issues with the look of the movie. I didn't like the look of the Predator. I thought there, there was a lot of weird greens. You saw that movie too. I think you were in the same boat. The, there was a lot of really noticeable green screen work. That really distracted me a lot. I, I I think it would have done really well in the movie theater. It probably would have. You know what I mean? It probably would It was have, a good look. But... I mean, it was a good looking 4K too, especially because I don't know where they shot this movie. When the movie opens up and you just see this huge lush of forest and it's like a, there's a big river going. I mean, it, whether it's CG or not, I don't know. But I mean, I thought it would have looked. I thought that movie would have done really well on the big screen. My biggest gripe with Prey as you know, and I'll, I'll get off my soapbox about this soon is when you see those practical, the practical predator suit in the behind the scenes footage design aside, I hate the fucking design, but it looked good practical wise. And they, they lay that terrible CGI version atop top of him. It's like the thing 2011 weird, all over again. It, that's a weird, that's a weird, that's a weird technique that these, I hate it. It's it's like I why cannot they, stand it. Yeah, it's weird that they do this mixing of practical and CGI stuff. I don't really understand it either. Do you think the thing I'm I'm jumping all over the place? I apologize, but the thing 2011. Do you think it would have done a lot better if they had kept all the practical stuff instead of overlaying all the scene and ruining the fucking movie? Have you seen that behind the scenes documentary where they show all that shit? I have. So good, dude. I have. I don't know, Brandon. I I think. Uh... I'd have to see it. You know, I, I, I'm one of those people. I, I think we've talked about this. It might have been me and Garrett, but I think you were there too. When that movie came out, none, none, neither me or any of my friends that saw it liked it. We just didn't, right? Yeah. And this is one of those movies that years and years later, everybody's like, dude, the, the, the prequel is actually not, it's actually pretty underrated. It's actually really, how come everything years later has to actually be good. Why can't things just suck and stay sucky? Yeah. Like, can, I mean, what are we talking about here? This is the thing you, it's not, it's, it's, if you're going to watch the thing, watch either the thing for another world or watch the 82 one. It's like, can't things just suck and they stay sucky. Why yep, does everything chat, have to be, why does yep. everything have to be underrated <laughs> years later? Am I wrong? No, the, in chat, we realize the irony coming from two guys who love Jason goes to hell. So we realize the irony of the situation. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I look in there, and that's not to say that there's movies, Brandon, that I've watched and gone back to and said, oh, that's that really wasn't as bad as I remember it. Like, yeah, because guess what? When you as you get older, your tastes change and there's nothing wrong with that. Like your taste change and then you're, you perceive things differently and your are the, what, like Brandon, if you would have showed me house by the cemetery when I was 17, I would have tried to put whoever was in, put somebody in jail for making me watch that. <laughs> I, I would have, but dude, you get older, then you watch this one movie and then it, or you hear one of your heroes like Alice Cooper say, Oh, one of my favorite movies is Suspiria. 
It's one of the scariest movies. And then you say, let me watch this movie. If he likes it, I should like it. And then you kind of get older and you kind of experience this. Or maybe you start watching some some Asian horror movies and then you get used to uh, subtitles. And then you say, okay, let me go watch some more of these Italian movies. And then like you start to be able to – you adapt and your taste change. Like there's nothing wrong with that, right? But some stuff just has to suck and still suck 20 years, 10 years later. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what are we talking about? Like, like some stuff just needs to stay sucky. And I'm not like saying Halloween. that needs to be the thing 2011 with everybody in the chat. But for me, yeah, I just think that movie was not that great. Mm -hmm. And it's still not that great. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I was so disappointed with Prometheus when I saw it in the theater. It didn't feel like an alien film to me. I agree with that, but I still I thought it was... <laughs> I thought it was like Dune for Alien, though, Brandon. I mean, you got to admit that it's a gorgeous movie when you see those fucking ships just land down. And what is it about you? I, I, I you strike me as somebody that would appreciate a film like that. And I, I can't believe you like Covenant. I, that's Covenant offends me. Covenant has the neomorphs, though. Yeah, but they're intense. I know, but man, Prometheus, I just don't. Uh, fuck do you think that's movie. Ridley Scott started in this fucking movie? Do, do, I'm about to get started. But, in the but, here, but, but Brandon, here's like, do you kind of think that Ridley Scott made Prometheus in a way because he was probably so aggravated that people thought he was going to make this kind of a certain kind of movie or that people expected him to make a certain kind of movie. And he was like, fuck you. I'm going to make this movie where you can't even really tell what year this is going on. And you're gonna think it's not connected, but it kind of is. Like it's it. There's a there. I I watched a documentary about Prometheus where it sits in the timeline, and so there's some ambiguity to it. I love it. I like the. I saw it in 3D, dude, in the movie theater. Yes, and so did it I. Whip my ass. I thought it my was. My problem just with Prometheus is he. It was supposed to be a one-off, not a movie with sequels. It was supposed to lead directly into Alien 79. Fine. My biggest problem with Prometheus is the third act. They go to a moon. It's not LV-426. It's LV-22 or some shit like that. So it's an identical moon, but it's not the same planet with an identical crashed space jockey ship. But it's not the same space jockey sh ship from Alien. The space jockey in Prometheus gets impregnated by a Neo face hugger and a neo xenomorph the deacon comes out at the end but it's not lv426 so the same exact scenario with the same exact type of space jockey same exact type of space jockey ship happens on a moon right next door but it's not the same moon from alien that's what bothers me about it right. if that makes any fucking sense i don't know if that makes well, sense anybody, what i just said but i'm just like why why what is the point of that bullshit That's all I got to say. <clears throat> I mean, when it comes to a new movie, I mean, tonally, what do you think? At the end of the day, do you think Romulus is going to get the casual alien fan back in the movie theater? I think that's the big question, right? Because I don't know. I, I think Prometheus did good because of the name Ridley Scott, and it probably got a lot of press. And I think they definitely named the next movie Alien Covenant instead of just Covenant on purpose. You know, but with this movie, Alien Romulus, it's a weird title. I mean, do you think we're at a point now where the casual alien fan is going to go see a, an alien film? I, I'm pretty optimistic. I think the casual fan will, yes, for sure. Just like, because I think at this point, all the casual fans, their curiosity is peaked, but I think the casual fans went to go see the AVP films also and the prequels because their interests were peaked. I think the problem is getting the old school alien fam, uh, fans back in the seats. Yeah. The people who felt ripped off by the AVP films and the prequels and they want to see Sigourney Weaver and that sort of continuity again. That'll be the hard part. Right. That's I'm going to go see it in theaters. I'm excited for it. If you can get really away. I, yeah, exactly. I just, I fucking, I don't want it to be just another alien film for the sake of being a mid cool. Right. You know, I want it to have some kind of gravity that bears on the rest of the franchise. So 
that's what I hope. Big K movies and games with a two dollar super chat. I love the scene where Fast Bender finger blasts himself. Here we go. One. It's always been Creep Show 2. One that we have is great value. So it's a Creep Show 2 also to me just feels like that perfect 80s time capsule. You know what I mean? Like with the uh the Firebird and the second sequence and all that stuff. The one that we have is great value, so it's a Walmart brand. It'll flip your lunch tray. Classic. <laughs> the one we have is great value, Brad. <laughs> That's a devil voice. <laughs> the one that we have is a great value. <clears throat> oh man. Um, Brandon, do you want to talk about nothing but trouble for just a second? Yes. <laughs> um, what is the when you think about what the crate? Let's just talk about this because I think we have people in here that haven't seen the movie. But just answer me this: What is the craziest thing? And you you really got to think about this for a second. What is the craziest thing about <laughs> nothing but trouble? Because there's the a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of zigs and zags in this okay, can movie. I, can I give you three of them? Yes. The the three craziest things to me about nothing What's but up? trouble. Yeah. What's up, Mel? Let's see Mel, Mel in the chat. The three craziest things. First of all, when I was a kid, when homeboy took his fucking nose off in the bedroom, freaked me out when I was a kid. His dick the nose. Judge. Yeah, he takes his nose off and you see like the skeleton nose. Yeah. In his bedroom, that shit freaked me out. The babies in the backyard always freaked me out as a kid. And the most bizarre thing about the oh, film. Oh, you're talking about the blacksmith babies? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the most bizarre thing about that film, uh, besides the dick nose, and that whole dinner scene is just bizarre. That, that's an LSC trip right there. The, is the, 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 uh, the roller coaster that shreds people into bones. That is the most bizarre what was that thing. Fucking, what, was that, what was that roller coaster called? The bone was, grinder the, or something. Was, yeah, the bone grinder or the shredder or something. Something like that. The bone shredder. Get yourself a dog. Something like that. All around the world, city yeah, yeah. stone. Uh, the bone stripper. Uh, Brandon, I think for me, the funniest scene in the entire movie. It's a small moment, Brandon, but to me. It's the end, isn't it? No, no. There's okay. something absolutely hysterical about this. Chevy and Demi, they're all at the judge's house and all of a sudden john candy is on patrol outside of vulcanvania pulls over this group they're drunk and there's a moment where john candy is going up to one of the guys and the guy pulls a gun on him pulls it up right to john candy's head and john's like no no, no please don't out of nowhere John Candy pulls out this 40 pound fucking Uzi blaster and just pulls out this gigantic gun like this. And I'm thinking to myself, where the fuck were you? Where was this thing on you? Yeah. This gun is this big. And yeah. he just like he just pulls it out of nowhere. Boom, this he's got a double fist this gun. I'm like, where the fuck did you get the gun from? <laughs> That's a great scene. Um Another great scene is, <laughs> like you said, the dinner table scene. First of all, when the hell <laughs> have they ever made Hawaiian punch in a bucket like that? You've never seen the giant can that you have to. I, th I, I This was before my, I had the cheese puffs in the bucket. Remember the thing you get the bucket cheese puffs. Yeah, the the Hawaiian Mr. punch was in it was in a giant tin can. Like they have the they have juicy juice in the giant tin can. Brandon, what what did he did he stick an oil drip? He did. On top he of did. It? Yep. Here's how I like mine. Punch. I suggest you have them the same. Brandon, were yep. those bratwurst dogs? They were. They looked undercooked and gnarly. But the way he says, "Get yourself a dog," that makes me hungry. I want one. You know, I would eat with that guy. Why not? Remember, you remember when uh, Chevy is trying to get out of uh the he's at the courtroom and he's they're trying to get over with and he starts smoking that cigarette mm -hmm. a cigar put out that no rocket <laughs> that movie <laughs> you know it's a funny moment Brandon. <laughs> do you remember when demi is trying to like butter him up and uh she says something about history that impresses the judge and he's like, 
you, you know your history, young lady. Very nice. I, I know mine too. And she goes, oh, really? Blah, blah, blah. I, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more and get to know more about it. And he goes, would you? <laughs> the way he says, would you? Like, oh, really? And she's just yeah. like, oh, God. Yep. I, I, so, Brandon, the story goes that Warner Brothers owed Dan Aykroyd a, some sort of favor. He did something for them, and that movie was basically the favor. Mm -hmm. Now, when I talk to people that were old enough to have seen that movie when it was released, Brandon, they make it sound like it was actually a big deal because it, it did flop, but people made it sound like anybody in the chat if you can it, they made it sound like brandon it was a big deal like it it, it was supposed to be a big movie mm -hmm. you know because look at the cast chevy demi yep candy acro like it's actually a pretty big cast and it, it's it not a cheap looking movie you got rick baker making the ba the baby blacksmiths yep <laughs> it's a it's a it's a hell of a movie man um do you th i i fucking to this day i cannot stand the title I think Valk and Vania sounded so much cooler. And that um, that original painting, that poster art that they had before they trashed it for favor of the one that we all know is such a cool piece of artwork. I got to look this up. So it was the, yeah. it was a poster that didn't get used. Pretty sure. I think it was the Valk and Vania poster. Originally. That was going to be the name of the movie, right? Yeah. But they... Yes, there it is, dude. Killer artwork there was no logo but they had like a temporary Vulcanvania thing over but it looks like it looks like national lampoons wait till you see this thing oh, hold on brandon because i see this let me share my screen uh, i see this is this not what you're talking that's about that's it that's it because this says nothing but trouble on it yeah, the one I'm looking at says Vulcanvania. It's actually a blank piece of artwork, like that. And they're like they're like overlaying the logo on top of it. Yeah, but look at that. Like that is so good. Imagine that with like a really creepy Vulcanvania logo atop of that. Like that's sweet. That looks straight up like a National Lampoon's poster. It's probably the same dude. It may be the same artist, but that's fantastic. Compare that with like I, again, the Nothing But Trouble poster we know. It's is not bad. Good. We we all like this poster. It's good, but like, come on, dude. Like, compare that to the other one. Brandon, what is this movie? Because like, if you if you <laughs> if you say it's a comedy, I would say yeah. If you would if you say it's an it's a horror movie, I would say yeah. I if consider it horror in the same feature, way Beetlejuice is. If you tell me it's a creature feature, I would say yeah. <laughs> it's all those things, dude. It's like Beetlejuice. It really is. Uh, or freaked. It's got that same kind of it walks all the lines. It's it's one of those crazy movies that kind of just slipped through. Like it should mm -hmm. never have been made. It's so I, I made a post on Instagram by the other day and I put this is what happens when Warner Brothers does not do any studio interference whatsoever and they let Dan Aykroyd just <laughs> make a movie. <laughs> like could you imagine they could you I Brandon give me the pit your pitch for nothing but trouble too. Oh, I think the shit. blacksmiths need a much bigger. The blacksmiths need a much bigger role. Oh yeah, I'll have to stew on that and come back for the next Planet Dirty. I don't got one. All right, fair enough. I don't got one. Is is that is that one of your favorite '90s movies? Um, probably not one of my favorites, but it's one of those oddities for sure. Probably not one of my favorites. Like I couldn't, I couldn't watch that movie on repeat, like a lot of other '90s movies. But I could I watch either. it once a I year. Could, I couldn't either. I probably I watch Nothing But Trouble once a year because it's always a fucking experience. It is. It really is. I want to see that movie in the theater. I wish that would that would play somewhere. I would love to see that on a big screen. You and me both. You and me both. I couldn't imagine the dudes in 1990, the college kids who actually did drop acid and go see that movie. They were probably, their mind was probably blown on the floor. Oh, dude, there was, there were the ambulances had to pull up to the theater. I'm sure dude, they had the craziest experience of their lives. They're still affected by it to this day. <laughs> they can't sleep. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's see. You didn't tell me what you thought about Beetlejuice, though. Are you excited? 
Oh, um, I am excited. I, I am, I'm excited. I think, I think Keaton still has it. You know what I'm saying? I think, I don't think he's aged out of anything. He's got that cool factor still. Uh, I think he's going to do a bang up job. Um, I think he almost looks better from what we've seen because he looks old now. Right. Like a corpse. Yeah. I mean, would you, do you consider, do you consider Ortega to be the Gen Z Christina Ricci? I guess. I guess she's sort of become that cool girl kid in the block now for movies. How, so how I guess great, so. She's just, she's in everything. How great is Christina Ricci though? I mean, till this very day. Yeah. She, uh, she was, she was the it for a long time. She like, she sort of replaced Winona Ryder, I think. I think so. Yeah. As like then, that, as that cool goth the, kind the of goth central girl. I guess, I guess Ortega is that, that, that now, I guess. Did you ever watch Wednesday? We watched the first half of the first season. It was good. I, I, I loved it. I thought Christina Ricci was, it was so great seeing her in that. It was good. Uh, the you whole know? thing was good. The tone was good. Ortega did a good job. Ricci did a good job. Everybody did a pretty good job. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of Morticia and Gomez very much, but I'm glad we didn't see too much of them in the show. I, Gomez was just like a... <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, look, let's look at his competition, I and mean, we're talking about Raul Julia. I mean, for yeah, God's we're never it, that's exactly that's me trying to compare it to those days, and we're never going to get that back. You know so. what I'm saying? Um, I enjoyed Wednesday. Um, so I think, I think, I think this is going to be a good movie, and um, I'm excited for Beetlejuice too. When does that come out? Is that October? Mm. I hope so. I love the fact that it's called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That's so good. Uh, September 5th. So a little bit earlier than I would have hoped. This summer is stacked. Screw Halloween. Like the summer is absolutely stacked. Yeah, but for Beetlejuice, I feel like it should be definitely like October 15th should be the rollout for that movie. If not middle of October, it should be like a Christmas movie. Like not uh, summer. I hear you. Chris Snyder says the '90s cast was lightning in a bottle across the board. Christopher Lloyd is Uncle Fester. Come on, Dude. Brandon. I I gotta say though, I gotta say though, and you may give me pushback on this. I I I struggle to understand why it. Adam's Family Two is preferred over Adam's Family. I think Adam's Family oh. One is perfect. One is I think because two is closer to the tone of the '60s show for sure. Way closer to the tone of that show. I think that's why people like it more. And probably closer to the tone of the 90s cartoon that came out. Remember that show? Yeah, yeah. I think it was probably closer to that. But then the first movie you're right is just that's a masterclass in filmmaking. That's a masterpiece of a movie. The first film is leaps and bounds better. But I think it's sort of a Wayne's World 1 and 2 where they're both masterpieces in their own right. And you could watch either one endlessly. Like Adam's Family and Adam's Family Values were perfect. I wouldn't change a thing about them. Uh, yeah, I, I just think the first one is like... The it's perfect, better. the perfect movie. It's also a little bit more, it's kind of darker, a little bit more mature. And yeah, it's, it's more of the feels, house. It's, it's it literally feels more dangerous darker. than part two. Yeah. I think the summer camp thing and obviously Debbie in part two sort of lightened the film a lot, expectedly, because that was the plot. But that's the first film didn't have those elements. So it just remained sort of a gothic. God, those movies are so damn good. Those two movies in Wayne's World One and Two are the are the, the four movies I can think of that have endless rewatchability. Besides, like Back to the Future One, Two, and Three, that kind of stuff. But dude, you're never going to top the '90s Adams Family. You're not. Uh, speaking of you know vintage TV shows turning into movies again, why do people hate Rob Zombie's Monsters? I've watched it three to four times and have fun every time, bro. I don't hate it. I didn't hate it. I just didn't like it like I thought I was going to. Like I had hoped. I really wanted to like that movie. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of stock. Well, but you know, Brandon, let's let's I'm gonna come to Rob's defense here in a small sense, not in a grand sense, but in a small sense. There's always gonna be a vocal minority that just hate everything Rob Zombie does. There is. I mean, there's just, there's no denying that. And that He's goes for a, a lot of directors. Yep. You know, um, I, my biggest issue with that movie, Brandon, was I just thought Sherry was bad in it. 
And I thought if she would have keyed back and let everybody else do this kind of animated thing, like I thought, I thought grandpa was good. Grandpa was great. Yeah. I thought, I thought, uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips was pretty good as, uh, Herman, not great, but pretty good. But like most everybody in that movie was able to be bouncy in this non cringy way where they all balanced with each other. But Sherry was just reading lines and doing her things with to me she was pretty bad now if she would have been more of this reserved and let everybody else be animated i thought it would have worked a lot better but yeah sherry to me was not good in this she was actually pretty distracting right in my opinion i my biggest gripe with the film and the i got you babe thing I wanted my, my knees buckled from cringe. <laughs> Don't even lie. That was just painful. I, I just didn't like that. The whole movie was just, it was a bunch of, it was just a string of scenes that didn't really connect. It just felt re- really bizarre. Like a bunch of weird, random scenes. I just didn't like, it just did not flow for me at all. But you could tell Rob was having the time of his life. Probably, but it's just, I don't know, man. It's just something uh I, I think they should have released the movie in a black and white variant. I think they should have gave him more money and actually had a full narrative. I was just something there's but I don't something... I, I don't think that's a money thing. I just think you know, why don't we let Rob direct a good script that he didn't write is what I'm saying. Because he writes yeah. all his movies. He does. We're at a crossroads here. I mean, what's Rob's next thing going to do? All right. Right now he's touring with Alice. They're having the time of their lives. Right. Um, I would love to see him if they come near me. Of course, I, I go to see Alice any chance I can. Right. But, you know, I think Rob's next project is going to be a big crossroad for him. I think it sort of sucks because I feel like he's done. I feel like the big studios have washed their hands of him. Because everything he's done since Halloween 2 has been very limited or straight to video. Which isn't bad, but like I miss the event Rob Zombie films. You know, like House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, Halloween 1 and 2. Three from Hell to a very lesser extent. It's just like, I feel like he's sort of been relegated to not event movies anymore. If yeah. that makes any sense. I, feel I, like I agree. Two was sort of a detrimental thing for him. I agree, but I, I think with horror fans, though, it is still an event, regardless of the theater, you know, experience of it or not. A lot of people were excited to either talk about it or shit on it or be excited for the Munchers when when it came out. I mean, how many? You know, that was a topic of conversation every day on the internet. It felt like. And I will so I will say this about the Munsters: it looks fantastic. And it shares a lot of similarities visually with Monsters Go Home, which I liked. And I, I, I do. Monsters Go Home is fucking classic. Uh, what was that sixty nine? Um, the thing about the thing about Rob that I thought was cool, and I definitely feel like he had the pull for this. Rob's a big physical media advocate. He's always has been. I think he's collected movies his whole adult life. When this movie was announced to Shutter, I mean to Netflix. Maybe a day later, he openly said, "I hey, don't worry. This movie is going to be on Blu-ray. And sure enough, it, it did. It came out on Blu-ray with a, I think it had a making of on it, you know. So I give Rob that credit for sure. Um, um, Christian. Yeah, go ahead. Can you uh, tell the audience to give me a drum roll? <laughs> audience, give us a drum roll. Here you go. Here's your drum roll. Just do it to yourselves. Hopefully that's not too distracting. Oh my god. <gasps> Planet Dirty. Is that the one that uh Cody got? It is, it is. Oh, oh my god. Oh, she's falling backwards. Look at that. Yeah. A planet dirty baby. She's just waking up, so excuse her yawns. Oh my god! Hi. <laughs> Let me move this other way. Look for at one that. second. 
Everybody you know, Br- well, Brandon, didn't I didn't I hit you up and I said, I see you bought some onesies. You did. You're like, who the hell bought these? I'm like, I didn't buy them. And we found out it was Cody, which is hysterical. They look great, dude. Look at that. A planet dirty baby. Yep. Planet dirty uh, baby. Ju- Justin's right. She does have a ton of hair. Oh, yeah. Yep. Ton of hair. Oh, my Hi. God. <laughs> now, Brandon, in, 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 in 10 years, you're going to be able to show your kid this. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Just imagine how much more old and folded you're going to be in 10 years. Oh, dude, I'll be, I'll probably be dead. <laughs> Look at that. Looks like, very uh, tired. yeah. I'm not holding her head weird either, guys. She just, she loves to put her head like this when she lays down. She's crazy. Right. Oh, man. Incredible. I say bye. I say see you guys later. She'll be a lot bigger next time you guys see her, I'm sure. She's going to have her in a little growth spurt. Oh, man. Very cool. Very cool. All righty. I wanted to show her off because I think she's about to eat. There you go. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, <clears throat> Rock Music says, when are you going to have a good Christian? I, I'm trying to accomplish a few things. Um, me and my wife have talked about it. You know, we've had some complications. That's all I'll say on here. But if you're smart, you know what that probably means. Um, it's not out of the question for us, but, um, I'm 32. I want to have a kid before I'm like late, late thirties. So, Mm -hmm. and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think I was 32 when we started. So, yeah. Um, anyway, guys, let's see what people are saying. What else? What else are people? uh, Everybody's congratulating you. Thanks guys. Appreciate there's it. Your, there's your drum roll. Excellent. Um, let's see. Dude, that I know you've already seen pictures, but that uh the other onesie is fucking hysterical. Yeah, can you get it real quick? I need to get a shirt of that. That's it's just, I didn't realize it looked that funny in person. Which one did the uh, the I Love New York one? Oh yeah, I have I got one. I know I, I need to, I need to get one. Somebody bought yesterday. I saw somebody bought uh, the uh, Yo Noid Planet C H A shirt. It's funny because also I get to see when people buy these shirts, and I'm just like, whoever's buying them, send me pics so I can post it. Oh, that's great. God, it's fucking hysterical. Hey, you know who, you know who made that. Who's that? The 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 shoot the uh the the father and son team that we that is always posting. Oh, that's about right. Us. I remember that. That's right. Tell I asked them. I said, "Hey, can I make that a shirt?" And they were like, "Yeah." That that is so. That face of you is. The next episode, <laughs> she'll be wearing this. That's just money. So, Chad, um, if you guys got babies and plan a dirty onesies, tag us in it because we want to see them. <laughs> Build a whole PD army. Oh man. Thoughts on the image of Christian Bale as Frankenstein. Did you see this? God damn it. I'm so... i become the grumpy old man. Why does... Ev- uh, why, well, here's why, the, did they, here, why did they crow my Frankenstein? I don't understand. Well, here, here's the thing, Brandon. Here's the thing. Devil's advocate. <laughs> Devil's advocate. De Niro pulled it off. Yeah, but he did. De Niro was... Fan- that was a fantastic movie. He looked freaky. He was great in the role. I'm sure Bale will do a great job. Like I'm sure I'm sure Skarsgård will do a great job in The Crow also, but I don't want to see these characters in like the the SoundCloud tattoo thing. Like Christian Bale's Frankenstein monster has tattoos, man. That's weird. Does he really? It looked like he did or did I see a fake picture? I swear I did, to God, I thought that it was a headshot. I thought it was a headshot that we saw. I think I'm looking at a different photo. Christian Bale, Frankenstein. I swear to God he had tattoos. I thought it was a headshot. Yeah, he's got hope on his chest. Can you do the thing where you share screen? Yeah. Um, where is it? How do I do this? Let's let the people see it. Present, maybe? Share screen. Yeah, yeah. present. And I, I can add it. I, I'll accept it on here and I'll let you bring it up. Okay. 
here we go. Can you see my screen? Can you see me? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, check it out. See that like hope thing? Oh my God. You're now it's right. small, but it's. I don't know. That looks pretty stupid to me. Like it's on his clothes and stuff too. Like, I just don't know why we're in this weird. Like, I feel like this kind of stuff. We're 10 years too late. Like the SoundCloud rapper boom with the face tats. Yeah, this, is, this is so this is so 2017. Exactly. And like <laughs> again, I was a big supporter of Jared Leto's Joker with all those stupid tattoos. I still am, but there's something about this and the crow that really bugs me about it. Like, we don't have to update these people in this way. Now, again, this is the bride. I think it's I think it's gonna be sort of a comedy. It's not universal. Well, so, like I said, like see, like I said, Brandon. De Niro did a great job. So he to did. me, it's like, well, you can't say a, a, a big actor can't pull this off. And then, of course, we've got Interview with the Vampire, which is Lestat. But I have a feeling this is going to be... I didn't know it was a comedy, though. That actually kind of does change I my might, mind a little bit. I might be wrong in that. I, th I think it's a comedy, but I could be wrong. If it's a comedy, we're it's a different animal. <laughs> I might be wrong about that, so don't quote me on that. But um, on that note, dude, are you going to see Annabelle? Is it called Annabelle? I thought they already made those movies. Oh, not Annabelle. Uh, Abigail. Excuse me. I don't know. Josh. Dude, I didn't realize it was a universal movie. And I didn't realize that it was a loose remake of Dracula's Daughter. My fucking mind was blown tonight when I figured that out. Like, why is this movie... Like, they should have saved this for their new Monsters Universe. It's totally a remake of a Dracula's daughter. Really? And it's from it's from Universal Studios. So it's like, dude. Just wanted to bring that up. My mind was a little bit blown. I'm like, they should have just I, saved I, this dude. Because that was one of the worst classic Universal mo uh, monster movies was Dracula's daughter. Probably the most boring movie in that set was Dracula's daughter. Yeah. So it's just bizarre, dude. Uh, yeah, it's it's. You know, my fear going back to uh, Nosferatu is if you look at the trend of Dracula movies over the last year, they're tanking. Yeah. To my chagrin, because I think Voyage of the Meter was better than half the shit that came out last year myself. I still need to see it. Oh, I loved it. I want to see it. Um, it tanked, Brandon. It's know, a long. It it, it's a long title. It sounds. It sounds kind of too artsy. Um, it should have been called The Last Voyage, and it probably should have been like an A24 film or something. Uh, well, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I, I just I thought it was really good. I gotta um, see it. And Renfield tanked big time. I liked Renfield. It was good. It tanked, and I did too. I thought it was a funny movie. I had a great time with it. You remember? You remember in the very beginning when you see Nick Cage as Dracula and he's all decrepit because he he hasn't had much blood. Yeah. Oh, Michael Sullivan brings up a good point, dude. Uh, what's the new Planet of the Apes movie coming out? Is it Kingdom, is Kingdom it, of the Planet of the Apes? Kingdom, Brian. I'm gonna tell you something. I get down with them Planet of the Apes movies, dude. Oh yeah, the old ones and the new ones. Uh, the only one I don't like in the whole damn franchise is that uh, that Tim Burton version. I did not like that version. The Mark Wahlberg one. Yeah, the remake. I feel from like, like I feel like that. No, that was that was like 2002. But yeah, really? I get you. Yeah, it was. But Brandon, I feel like that movie has taken, has has been buried deep into the dirt. Nobody, I never see that on physical media, nothing. I thought the rise and war of the Planet oh, Apes, yeah. those movies were fucking great. Oh, yeah. And this is the fourth movie of that reboot series. What's the order of them? Is it? Is you got it, Rise, you got Dawn, you got War, and now you got Kingdom for this reboot series. And you can tell we're getting close to like the planet of the apes era. Like I'm assuming the next movie, they're just going to call it planet of the apes. Yeah. That's what I assume they're going to do. Rise dawn war kingdom. Mm -hmm. I liked uh, dawn a lot. Dawn of the planet. Dawn was of the really apes. Good. See, I wish they'd make a box set of those, Brandon. I'm sure they big will. Old, a big old monkey paw with the blue rays in them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Brandon, speaking of apes, can you give me your two cents on the classic 1990s film Congo? Um, 
Amy, the girl. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I really liked it as a kid in the 90s. I think I watched it semi-recent, like 10 years ago. I've been pushing that movie on social media I, and I, talking I've been about seeing it. it. I still think that the, uh, what are they called? Are they called Diamondbacks? All I know, Brandon, is those gorillas were pissed. Those the white lava, gorillas at the end freaked me the those, fuck out, dude. Those lava blazer blasting yeah. gorillas. Those, dude, do you remember? Do you remember in Congo when they're fighting in that they're fighting in that volcano mm. and the gorillas just start getting trashed in the lava? Yep. And they're back. <laughs> the gorillas are dying. Those things scared the shit out of me as a kid. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Congo's great. Congo's really good. I'm surprised they haven't remade that movie as like a huge budget, serious film. Like that's coming. That's coming for sure. You know what I think they're going to remake, Brandon? I'm no bullshit. You know, you you talk about Kong. You know what I really think they're going to remake one day? The Apple Gates. Waterworld. Oh man, you can't remake that movie. Why would you want to? Because I think I think Universal will refuse to take an L on it. <laughs> I mean, Brandon, the movie underperformed. I mean, now it, it technically made money, but mm. people got to remember the budget is the budget. The budget, so you, the got, budget. you have to fact you have to factor in the exorbitant amount of money they they make they spent to market the movie, millions, tens of twenties of thirty. So even though the movie underperformed, they still said, "Nah, nah, this is a hit. Fuck you guys. We're gonna make this a huge ride at our at, at our studios." That was a huge fucking deal when that movie came out. I still remember that movie like it was yesterday. The hype, the posters, the merchandise, the video game tie-ins, like all that shit for Waterworld. You know what's so funny about Waterworld, Brandon? It got a game for Virtual Boy. Oh, yeah. Virtual I have Boy. a Brandon, Virtual Boy. It's all just you red. See, you see that? That's my Virtual Boy, my glass cabinet. And, and the, there's the box. Oh, yeah. Nice. You know, it's crazy. I have a game called Wario Land. It's actually a fucking great game. Oh, mm. Brandon, we got Mama Blu-ray in the chat. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. What's up, what's up, Mama Blu-ray? Um, uh, yeah, let's see. To this day, the show at Waterworld Universal Hollywood is one of the most popular attractions there. Brandon, I was talking to Sydney about this. Nothing set in stone, but I told Sydney, I said, "Hey, we ha we've we've never taken a legitimate vacation mm -hmm. in a long time." I said, "What what if we took a week off and we went to Florida, go to Universal Studios, so I can go to the gift shop and buy seven Back to the Future mugs?" <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, dude, if I come to Florida, I'm coming. To, I'm coming to see you. All right, dude. If you guys do that, we are gonna meet you guys at Universal Studios. As well, also for Halloween Horror Nights. I'm assuming you're talking about Halloween Horror Nights, right? More than likely. More than likely. Because that'll be the one thing that gets us back there because we haven't been there in years now. So, Brandon, can you paint me and the audience a picture? We're at, we're at an hour and 33. I want to, I don't want to go too much longer. We've had a, we still have over 100 people here, guys. For the love of God, hit that fucking like button. Brandon, tell me, let's paint, paint me and the audience a picture. It's 2007. Mm. You're at Halloween Horror Nights Universal. The best year. What what am I what am I seeing? Paint you're, me a picture. You're parking your car. You're walking for about 15 minutes. Uh, you're gonna come to a very tall cement gate, and you're gonna see the Halloween Horror Nights coins hanging above you. Lots of crazy lights, a lot of like twisted carnival metal, because that was the year of Carnival of Carnage. You're going to smell the fog machine smoke. You're going to hear the music. You're going to hear the chainsaws. You're going to be fucking hyped beyond belief. You're going to walk through the gates, either buy your ticket or show them your ticket, get through the gates, and be completely engulfed in the fog machines as you walk down Main Street or whatever the fuck the street is called. You're going to encounter preliminary characters, preliminary chainsaw stuff, stilt walkers, fire breathers, scare zones lots of crazy lights the occasional live show happening on the street maybe you'll see a glass coffin filled with rats um maybe you'll see a little person dressed as chucky running through the streets that happens sometimes you'll see the chainsaw drill team from time, time to time uh and you'll come upon eight to ten haunted houses 
great alcohol, uh, tons of fantastic food and merchandise options. Was this the first year that they did a Friday the 13th house? Officially, yes. Tell me about that. The Friday the 13th Camp Blood House of 2007 might be my number one favorite Halloween Horror Nights house of all time. And again, I went to Halloween Horror Nights for my first time in 98. Then I went back in 2003 and have gone every year since up until 2019 was our last year. So I've been quite a number of times. And that that fucking Friday house was so damn good. You literally felt like you, you were in like a, a maze of cabins from Crystal Lake. They had the smells going in there. So you smelled mildew. You smelled mold. You smelled like charred wood, decay, fantastic immersion, really realistic gore effects, uh, camp counselors screaming for help. Uh, the Jasons they had in there were all really tall. They had like the stilt boots on. They were dressed like Freddy versus Jason. That was going to be my next question. It was it was that that exact design, so awesome in person because you literally felt like you were in the story, meeting Jason. They did such a good job of making these guys look huge, like I'm six foot one, six two, something like that, and these Jasons were all like, I was looking up at them. It was so cool. I can't even explain beyond that. How you had to you just had to have been there. Anybody in the chat who can vouch for 2007. Especially that Friday the Thirteenth house, dude, was so good. Beyond right that, in. the Thing haunted house, fucking pristine, good. The really? Dead Silence house, out of this world. They also had the Leatherface house, the Nightmare on Elm Street house. Didn't you say the Chucky house was kind of corny though? In two thousand nine, they had a Chucky house, and it was really it was one part was cool because you walked through the doll factory from part two. It was all the boxes stacked up. It was like a maze of just the boxes. That was cool. Everything yeah. else was really hokey and cheesy. It was not executed properly. At least it wasn't every night I was there that year. So there are off years. There are years that are better than others. But uh, when it's good, it's fantastic. The problem is now, and I need to reiterate it to you now because you guys are thinking about going. If you go to Halloween Horror Nights and you don't get the Express Pass, you're going to have a horrible time because it is such it's literally the biggest Halloween event in the world. People come from overseas to go to this event. They don't go to Hollywood. They come to the Florida one. It's literally the biggest Halloween event in the world. And it's they add dates to it every year. They max out ticket sales. It's way too it's way oversold. It's just I'm telling you. Just be prepared for the fucking crowds because I don't need crowd. I don't but think I don't need to go to the houses. I just want to shop. I want to buy a oh. bunch. I'm sure they have t-shirts and cups and mugs and shit. If you're cool with just shopping and like the vibe and the ambiance, then you'll have a good time. I just want to get a drink. I want to go get some shirts. You'll you know, Brent, I'm a Brennan, I'm a shirt guy, right? And I remember on this, if you watch the his name was Jason documentary special features, they have a segment where they talk about the Jason house at Universal, and the guy is wearing the shirt that they had that year. It's like a Jason takes Manhattan shirt. It's a black shirt, and it's got like a Jason popping out of New York thing. It's do you know what I'm talking about? Do you I remember? So. Let me let me look this up. say 2000 i can find it i know exactly what it is if i see it 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 this was the shirt that the guy was showing at the haunted house for universal studios it's the one that i have pulled up on the top right do you recognize that shirt do you remember seeing that at the at the uh, haunted house i year? don't i don't that that's it that was the shirt he had. He was wearing it in 2007, whatever it was, when they filmed that segment for the His Name Was Jason documentary. I've wanted that shirt for so long. I think they make it now. I, I can get it. But I want one from the actual show. Yeah. So Dude, cool. um, not to keep rambling about this, but <clears throat> I forgot what year it was. It might have been 2008, 2009. There was an American werewolf in London house. They actually used the same house two years in a row. And that was one of the best haunted houses ever. They had scenes from the movie. They had the werewolf puppets. They weren't people in costumes. They were puppets. Big giant wolf heads coming out of the walls and shit. 
you got to go through the porno theater where the, you see the the skeleton of um what is his name not david his friend is all rotten he's sitting in the theater dude it's crazy one of the best houses ever have they not made universal have they not made a gremlins house Mm-mm. why wouldn't they maybe spielberg was like nope not a chance You know, there's a cut. There's supposed to be a cut of Gremlins that the world hasn't seen. That's supposed to be a horror movie. It's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Something about something about the mama stabbed a Gremlin. They showed it before she stuck it in the microwave. Yeah. Shit like that. I want to see that. I don't. I don't know if that footage exists. I'm pretty sure Dante talked about it. Like it wasn't supposed to be a big budget movie. Amblin was supposed to be like this thing. Yeah. That let Steven kind of like let people get creative and make fun movies. And there was so much interest in gremlins. It kind of was like, no, we're going to put some backing behind this. That would be sweet to see. I think it was actually on how, uh, on the, on the, uh, what was it? What are those horror documentaries that came out or coming out in search of darkness? Uh, yep. Joe Dante talked about that. I'm pretty sure he said the mama stabbed a gremlin in a kitchen. Maybe it is Warner brothers. I'm not sure. Um, Oh man, man, I'm getting old. I'm tired. You are. Uh, you are. Brandon, honestly, like the, my thirties, I'm, I'm coping. But did you have a did you have a did you have a hard time when you started getting into your thirties? Like shit, I've actually made it this far. When I turned thirty, I had a big crisis for a very small amount of time. I did I too. A, yeah, I had a crisis at twenty five and thirty, uh, and then like thirty five ish, I sort of had another small crisis. But I was already a dad by that point, so it sort of goes out the window because mm-hmm. you're so focused. But I think it sort of just becomes kind of like you you're, you just turned thirty two, right? Yeah, so it's sort of just you don't really feel older than you did at 23. No. Really. Like there's certain things I feel now like I I can tell like my knee hurts a little bit more sometimes or my back hurts more. But I don't really feel older. Yeah. You know what? I have a theory about that, Not Brandon. Wood. I have a theory about that. I think the world is moving with us, not past us. Mm. And what I mean by that is don't you kind of notice how like millennial culture is just massive? It is. Yeah. Everything is. I mean, think about it. Every show that me and you grew up watching, all the actors have super popular podcasts. Pod Pod meets world. There's podcasts for Ned's Declassified School Survival. Like there, everything that we knew and love is still like super popular. Yeah. It's resurgent too. And I don't know. I feel like the world's moving with us, not past us. Yeah. And maybe it might be, every- it might be working against us, but it's still moving with us. So that's yeah. <laughs> it, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like, I just feel like people don't get old anymore. They, they, they do physically, but not mentally. And they don't, you know, that was my, my biggest fear, Brandon, is I don't want to ever lose my. I don't want to ever feel like I, I I can't have fun and be silly anymore. And yeah. I don't think you ever really have to, but it's just like, maybe you grew up around people that were stern. I had family members do that where they didn't laugh. Oh yeah. The gruff, the gruff older class of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Different mindset, different times, man. Different. Uh, yeah. Harder lifestyles, you know, factories pumping out black smoke all the time. I'm sure that's that attributed a lot to them aging faster. And becoming disillusioned with life faster, but we'll I, get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I um, I had, I have an uncle that you know on my mom's side was always around us growing up. I never saw him laugh. Yeah, it's just stern. Mm-hmm. Never. He would eat dinner with us. He never would be like, "Oh, this tastes good." He would drink. Like, no, nothing. He would eat, not say anything. Drink, not say anything. How y'all doing? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, like never. You know. Now my uncle, my uncle Mark, man, he raised me. He was a big part of my childhood. Still, I'm still close with him. 
he was he he got me into a lot of he got me into ACDC because he used to take us to the Zephyrs baseball games. They were triple A baseball team in New Orleans, and we used to go to the baseball and he would pop, we would listen to Highway to Hell top to bottom. We would listen to Metallica's. He used to always tell me, Bubba, the best Metallica album of all time is Ride the Light and don't let him tell you anything else. He may not be wrong about that either. So we used to listen to Ride the Lightning all the time, top to bottom, Brandon. Not, 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 not just what's the big hit on that record, not just uh, whatever on that. I mean, top to bottom, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Uh, I'll never forget. We listened to Warrant. He showed me Dirty Rotten, Filthy Stinking Rich. He let me hold the cassette, and it was this fat guy with money hair, and he's smoking money. Um, and I'll never forget. He, he showed me on cassette because he had a Chevy S10 he used to ride. It was a single cab, little gold truck with a cassette deck. I'll never forget one week we went to the we went to the game. And for the first time, Brandon, my uncle put on uh, uh, ACDC um, Razor's Edge 1990. Changed my life. Till this very day, that's to me, that's the greatest acdc record of all time that's that's considered a comeback record too and when you look at the pantheon of like great comeback records there's three that i think are the greatest of all time permanent vacation mm -hmm. Ray, uh razor's edge with acdc and alice and back in black oh, okay and alice cooper's well back in black yeah i get it one of the biggest selling records of all time but this was a comeback to a comeback record because yeah I think people like people may not real. I mean, the fans do, but like back in the day, Brandon, we talk about we talk about bands. They were putting out records every year, mm. you know. And if you look at ACDC, they had some great records in the '80s that people like. Brandon, "Fly in the Wall" is one of the best barroom blues rock records, but there's no hits on it. Mm -hmm. "Heat Seeker" is a great record. There's no hits on it, but it's a great record. But you don't hear anything from those records on the radio. None. Zilch. Mm. And the last time ACDC had a hit was Who Made Who? Really? A radio. Maximum hit. Overdrive, yeah. And that was 85. So they were kind of, the latter half of the 80s weren't good to ACDC. So when, th when Razor's Edge came out, right before grunge, Brandon, think about that. I mean, the heartbeat before Nirvana and all that stuff took over. Razor's Edge was the, to me, has to be one of the greatest comeback records of all time. It, it, it was huge. Yeah. And there was, Brandon, it was hit after hit after hit. Yeah. Uh, what do you do for money? Money talks. Are you ready? Thunderstruck. That's four singles, huge singles on that record. I incredible. It's one of my favorite records of all time. You know? Yeah. You mentioned Permanent Vacation. Fantastic fucking album. Pump is my one of my favorite records of all time. I think Permanent Vacation is my favorite Aerosmith record. I think Get a Grip might be my second, but Pump is really good. Get a Grip is one of the best night. Do you think about this, Brandon? For a record to come out in 1993, mm -hmm. to be one of the classic rock bands, 70s and 80s rock bands, to put out a record in 93 is basically career suicide. Yeah. A lot of bands just stopped putting out records. And the bands that did, like Foreigner, put out a record in 94 where the singer returned back to the band. Great record, Brandon. Nobody bought it. Yep. But to make a record that good, that not only does it penetrate, but it becomes one of the greatest and most successful Aerosmith records ever. That's how good Get a Grip was. And listen, I swear to God, yes, Get a Grip was fantastic. <laughs> but 93, Wayne's World 2 helped that album. I promise. Without a doubt. Well, without a doubt. Because Shut Up and, and Dance was off that album. You know what, what I mean? What do you think it was? And it, for the chat, too. I mean, what do you think it was about Aerosmith that, uh, you know, Brandon, a lot of bands didn't make it out of the night of the 80, late 80s. Um, some bands did. For for instance, Van Halen, uh, for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, that came out in 91, number one record. Every Sammy Hagar record was a number one record. Mm-hmm. Um, now I love the David Lee Roth era as well, but I'm, I, I like Sammy's more same. And I, 
again, every record Van Halen did with Sammy went to number one. Mm -hmm. From Lawful Call Knowledge, Killed. And then guess what, Brandon? Balance was a number one record in 1995. Mm. What do you think it was about Aerosmith and Van Halen that they were able to penetrate? Like they were, they were beyond, they were above, they were above, you know, they were above the, what do you call it? When there's, they were above trends in the rock world. Like they, they, they yeah. penetrated. They, they weren't, they weren't, what do you think it was? Was it the songs or do you think it was just something about them that you couldn't pigeonhole them to a specific subgenre? Like you couldn't pigeonhole them to hair metal or something right. like that. I don't know. I think what you just said is the nail on the head. They sort of transcended whatever was going on in the smaller zeitgeist of things at the time. They were just in the zeitgeist overall. So I think they just sort of were. I mean, if that makes any it, sense. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I think it's just the songs too. I mean, look, I'll admit this biggest Alice Cooper fan on the planet. I don't think anybody's a bigger Alice Cooper fan than me. Of course, there's people out there, but my point is I love Alice. Thursday, I'm going to get an Alice Cooper tattoo right here. I nice. decided I'm going to get an Alice tattoo right there. Um, so Trash comes out in 89. Massive success. Hey Stupid, again, follow-up record, 91, right there, Brandon, the heartbeat before the Seattle shit. Yes. I apologize. I just don't like it. Does really great. He came out. His last Sony record was 94. And that was Last Temptation. Great record, but I don't know how well it did. It's a great record. I mean, it really is a, just a fantastic record. But I I think, I think Hey Stupid was the last massive selling. And when I say massive, I mean multi-platinum selling mm -hmm. Alice Cooper record. Uh, that doesn't mean he hasn't put out good records since then. I think Brutal Planet, I've gone on a record, Brandon. Brutal Planet to me is one of the best new metal records of all time. I just wish people would listen to it. They don't because they don't look as Alice as being somebody that can hang in that subgenre. They look at, oh, well, it, that's new metal. That's all Mar That's all Manson. Well, it's the so same argument as why as people dismiss Carnival of Souls because they didn't want to see Kiss doing grunge. It's, it's a great record. Thing. Yeah, exactly. That's, I need to check out Brutal. I haven't heard Brutal Planet, I don't think. I need to check I wish, out. I wish you would. I really do. I wish you would. I didn't realize he was doing like a new metal spin. That's pretty crazy. I can't even imagine what that sounds like. So I'll check that out. <clears throat> when you saw Alice Cooper live the several times you have, did his stage show ever look as cool as it did in Wayne's World? Um, did you ever have that elaborate of a stage show? The big... I'm no, sure it's probably just for the movie. I, I, I well, you got to remember, Brandon. He was Cooper. Does Cooper still does fantastic shows, good crowds? Uh, but he does a lot of Cooper does a lot of double bills. He doesn't do solo shows. He actually he did a solo show when I saw him, uh, but it was a pit stop. I, I locked out. the The too close for comfort tour was him playing uh, theaters like 7,000 seater theaters and you know, but he, but back during the Hey Stupid era when that record was gigantic, he was doing, you know, arenas mm -hmm. and he had the size and stage to put on that production. Uh, the Hey Stupid tour was great. I watch footage of that all the time and he's got the big skeleton in the back. Right. I mean, yeah. we talk about stage sets, Brandon, we got to talk about kiss. Fucking a. And uh, I think the coolest stage set, was the hot in the shade tour with uh the big the sphinx, sphinx thing the sphinx yeah. i mean talk about a great backdrop you know yeah and i i actually i i like i like the statue of liberty for revenge paul has talked on record like he wasn't really sure why they went with that they just kind of <laughs> thought it was a like a cool thing but like yeah why did they go with the statue of liberty mm -hmm. in the back but yeah the the sphinx was fantastic it's fantastic. That's sort of the only really piece of like iconography from a stage that they had, like besides the Kiss Lights logo and stuff. They didn't yeah, really have anything like time. the Sphinx besides that, I don't think, really. No, the Sphinx and, and Revenge Tour were the only times where they kind of did big like, props instead yeah. of just the gigantic golden kiss. Um, 
Do you like Alice Cooper's Goes to Hell or Welcome to Hell? Both. Are you kidding me? Classic records. You like Constrictor, right? Of course I do. Obvious <laughs> reasons for you no know, four. Yeah, but. Uh, the, the record's fantastic. Uh, Life and Death of the Party, Thrill My Gorilla, uh, Crawling. I mean, the whole record, top to bottom, I think is just nothing but hits. I need to listen to that album again. Since it's stellar, Life and Death of the Party is a great song. Do you literally not like any bands of female singers? Music? Of course I do. Um, I'm I'm the biggest Lita Ford fan in the world. Drain's a fucking kick ass band too. Remember them? Um, yeah, uh, I like Drain. Sth. Drain. Who who else? Um, Hole was good for Hole, a while. Hole. Um, Somebody in the chat said Nightwish. They were they're pretty good sometimes. Her voice gets a little bit operatic and annoying my, sometimes, uh, but they're good. One of my favorite singers of all time is Stacy Q. I, I am a yep. diehard Stacy Q fan. Uh, I found out about Stacy Q from Return of Living Dead when she joined SSQ, and then she got a solo deal, and she became Stacy Q. And I have a number of her records. I'm the biggest Stacy Q fan in, in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I, I even listen to uh I like uh uh not Tiffany, but the other one that did uh Electric Youth. What's that girl? Somebody tell me it's Electric Youth, the record. I get lost in your eyes. Is it me? What is that woman's name? Uh, Debbie kid. Gibson. Debbie Gibson. Yeah, thank you. I love all that shit. Um, anyway. Yeah, somebody in the chat said heart. That's a fantastic <laughs> one, too. Yeah. Fucking Marilyn Manson, dude. Fucking I hear hell. Manson's trying to get it back together. I hope know? so. I saw those photos. Him, He lost all that weight. I can't believe those photos are from now. I hope he... I hope he comes back with a killer stage show and I hope he I hope he has his his voice back because the last three times I saw him, it was cool, but like you could tell the weight was I, I, really I, putting a strain on his voice. Well, you know, yeah, he pissed me off. I still want my money back. <laughs> the Brandon, we have to talk about this. Me and you have talked about this. I think me and you are on the same page. I think Manson had the best music career tra trajectory I'd ever seen personally. And what I mean by that is you really got to see an, an, an artist mature. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I tell people all the time, if you listen to Manson, if you started listening to Manson from the, what was the name of it? It's a disturbing title. The smell Spooky of Spooky kids. Yeah. And what was the next one that the Wonka cover? What was that one called? Oh, um, the first album was portraits of American family. Yeah. And then you had Smells Like Children. It was an EP. Smells Like Children. Yeah. That was the Wonka yeah. one. So if you listen to uh, Old Manson. Yep. And then you watch his career. You go from that. You get to Antichrist Superstar. Then you get to. Uh, mechanical Animals. Mechanical Animals. Hollywood. Yeah. And then you start to get to the high end of low. Fucking underrated masterpiece. It's an incredible, you get to hear an artist maturing, mm -hmm. not only lyrically, he's not trying to be so anthemic. He's talking about the realities of, of drug abuse and the realities of bad relationships and the realities of this and struggles and the stuff he's dealt with, not only lyrically, but his music really serves storytelling in a way that's not so riff driven, but is song driven. Mm -hmm. High end of low, I think, is one of the most. I agree, it's an incredible record, and I I still say, Brandon, one of the best records I ever have heard in my life is, uh, it's it's the I forget the name of it, the Pale Emperor, the Pale Emperor, dude, Holy top to bottom. Man. When I heard Fucking the Mephistopheles of Los Angeles mm -hmm. for the first time, I was like, this is. This is some of the best songwriting in this genre I've ever heard in yes. my life. So you agree with me. Pale Emperor was a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So there's a three album run. I just want to make sure I want to make sure I got this right for people because somebody's going to walk away from this and do a little homework and they're going to see what we're talking about. So 
after you get out of the golden age of grotesque, that is the end of that is the end of chapter one mm -hmm. of Manson. Mm -hmm. Right? That is, really is. Of trying to prove himself, trying to be daring, trying to be trying to be outlandish with the music still had good messaging on some stuff. Like I think uh, the new shit is great. It's all about I'm Hollywood, accept this shit. Sh I'm shoving it down your throat. That's what the song's about. People don't That's realize like, it. It's like his KMFDM record almost. So he, he takes a break, Brandon comes out with eat me, drink me. I got to be honest. Terrible record. Not a fan at all, dude. Terrible record. 2007. Like he, he didn't, he wasn't ready. If I was your vampire, it was the only song I'm lukewarm on. So, guys, High End of Low came out in 2009. And this was the start of the new era of Marilyn Manson. And it's a fantastic record. Then he comes out with Born Villain, another, another good record. Still in the same trajectory. It's no more heavy riff. It's still hard rock, but it's not riff central. It's song central. And I was like, man, this is great shit. Then all of a sudden, The Pale Emperor came out in 2016 and was one of the best records I've ever listened to. Mm. Deep Six, Third Day of a Seven Day Binge, Brandon, is so one good. of the most hypnotic songs. Groovy as fuck, too, And just dude. that, mm, the yeah. chorus. And then My Worst Fears came true when Heaven Upside Down came out. And it mm. was literally him trying to sound like 1998 marilyn manson yep. and it sounded like shit i was not a fan what was that single on that record that you have it pulled up we, uh, we know, know where you live, live. dude terrible. terrible dude that's a jinx and okay. then we are chaos same thing i hated yeah. it hated no i didn't it. like that was worse than the first one i agree so guys listen somebody look this is how good uh, this is how good the high end of low is now recognized. There's three versions of the album, deluxe international international version. And then the, the standard record, Brandon will agree with you. This is one of the best records of a maturing artist ever. This was the birth of uh, era Two Manson dude. And uh, get the deluxe version because it has the remix of Arma motherfucking get in and uh rusted horse. So good. The remixes are good too. Fantastic record. Um, so yeah, I just, we gotta do, we gotta do a Manson show at some point. Well, we just did, you know, we did, we just spoke, <laughs> we just spoke the truth. <laughs> Brent, I gotta be honest with you. I, when zombie came out with his, this is the last thing we'll talk about. We're at two hours. Uh, when zombie came out with his record, uh, in 2016, the acid, Witch dispenser satanic orgy thing, that record was incredible. A ton of hits Good. on it. Good. I'm a teenage rock. God. Yeah, and then and then everybody's the fucking the UFO. Gore whore. Yep. Single after single, the record he put out in 2021, terrible. It was it was not good. What was that called? There that was record. one semi hit. Uh, King Freak, everybody. King Freak was the one semi hit, but it's not good. Now, Brandon, this is the last thing we got to talk about. The lunar injection Kool Aid Eclipse conspiracy was not good. No, That's it's it. just no hit. Brandon, here's the good news. Riggs is back in the band. Do you I think that. the next zombie record is going to sound like Hellbilly Deluxe? or the Sin If we get some sinister urge riffs and no, this record, that. Brandon. I want Hellbilly Deluxe 1 vibe. Well, I mean, it's the same. Come on. That's sinister urge, sinister urge is basically the same thing. Yeah, but it was almost a little bit too clubby. It was but a little dude, bit too It was hit after hit on that record. I get it. But I know that Riggs is back. Is 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 Tempesta back? That's what I want to know. Uh, the bassist, John Tempesta, wasn't he the drummer? Uh, Ginger Fish is in is drumming, which is basically the second drummer he had. Yeah, let me see. God damn which it. Which was the Manson drummer? Yeah, he was. Yep. So Brandon, think about this: the original bassist and Riggs, the original guitar player, is back in in Rob. Mm -hmm. Now I love John Five. I think he's one of the best modern guitar players today, talent wise. But if we get a Hellbilly Deluxe, an actual Hellbilly Deluxe 2, even though I actually like Hellbilly Deluxe 2, the record, but I mean, tonally, if we get the legitimate Hellbilly Deluxe 2 with classic rig riffs that, you know what I'm talking about? Just yep. nasty four card, four chord. Like, dude, that's what we need. 
So that's going to be an interesting thing because I, John Five is an idiot. John Five is a moron for taking the Motley Crue gig <laughs> to is, embarrass yeah. himself with with a fat Vince Neil singing like shit. An idiot. He had the best gig on earth playing kick-ass new metal stuff with Rob, with Draculas and Frankensteins coming out on stage to go play with. Like you're an idiot, John Five. He is for real. So the good news, Brandon, is maybe we're gonna get the classic Rob Zombie record we've been wanting since twenty since two thousand three, basically. Because be after that, after that, we got educated horses, and that was all John Five, and the band started sounding different. That's just mm-hmm. there was there was a power to those to the Riggs era with those like just Brandon. Do you remember the intensity of I feel so good. I feel so numb. Oh yeah. It's so simple, but it drives. That's why Astro Creep 2000 from White Zombie was so damn good because of Riggs and Tempesta. Dude, dude. Yeah. Oh, he'll never work with Tim Pesta again. If that's the guitar player, yeah. The the drummer. The chick is uh oh the chick she was playing with she did some stuff with uh Sammy Hagar for a while, like solo. Yeah. I forget her name. So but yeah, it's, I, I, that carried over to Hellbilly and definitely, definitely Sinister Urge for sure. Do you think Hellbilly Deluxe is the best record Rob ever put out? Pound for I do. pound. Absolutely. I think it's Sinister Urge. Really? Dude, Feel So Numb to me is the best Rob Zombie song of all time. It's really good. But again, that I feel like that record is a little bit too it's got too much of like a there um, are there's a few fillers. Like honestly, there's a song with Ozzy on it that I just think sucks. Ironhead. It just sucks. I there's, there's too much of um I he's do always think dabbled in hip hop and EDM stuff, but there's it's Sinister Urge is a little bit too EDM-ish. Yeah, but dude, see the hits on Sinister Urge, like <laughs> feel so numb and uh feel the so red red cr- the red red crewy. Yeah. Uh na na They're so the hits are so catchy. It's take me down to Triple Town on that record. It might, you know what you know what is on that record? Let me see. This is the house. Come it is, on yep. in. That's right. So. Yeah, bring her down to Cripple Towns. It's a good record. Don't get me wrong. Never gonna stop's on there. Dead Girl Superstar is good. Demon Speeding's awesome. But I just there's something they, about Hellbilly Deluxe, dude. Oh, top, come on. Well, here's the thing. As a record, I agree with you because Hellbilly Deluxe literally top to bottom. And there's even that one little weird like interlude that has like this ancient Greek. It's like, you know, I'm talking about there's just there's a little interlude piece in the even that works perfectly with the record. As a body of work, Hellboy Deluxe is perfect. I'm not arguing with that. But the hits on Sinister Urge are so catchy to yep. me. It's just like, oh no, 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 come on. Like to me, Feel So Numb is the best. Like that I've never heard an arena song. Like that's like the perfect arena. Like that song sound it needs to be only played in arenas. I agree. So here's what I'm talking about. I was wrong. So Tempesta was drums. He's never coming back because Ginger Fish is on drums. But all I'm thinking of is Riggs is back on guitars. Is Blasco back on bass? Yes. That's what I yes. Know. Blasco so is back, back on bass. That's so why Riggs I'm and saying Blasco are that's both the back. touring band right now. Holy that's shit. the touring band. So, so yeah, there's something if they, there. If they write the next, if Riggs and Blasco write the next record, Brandon, this could be the actual legitimate Hellbilly Deluxe 2. Yes. Do you like that record, Hellblade Deluxe 2, the actual one from 2010? It's got some uh, it's got some decent songs on it. I Chew it, it up, decent. spit it out, sick bubble gum. I think it was decent, man, but I just it's Rob Zombie, like you said with Educated Horses, the band changed. I think he sort of went back to his bluesy groove metal stuff. And I like the darkness of Astro Creep 2000, Hellbilly Deluxe and Sinister Urge. I think Hellbilly Deluxe 2 is a little bit too Sci-fi ish. It's almost it's almost Sci-fi like a Power light. Man. It's almost like a Power Man five thousand record. It is, which is weird considering. Yeah. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. Um oh, what's on here? Jesus Frankenstein. I, I feel like it's good, but it does not deserve to be called Hellbilly Deluxe 2. I totally agree. But I would make fun of it, but guess what? Alice Cooper also made Welcome to My Nightmare. Yeah. And there's only three songs in that record I really like. But here we go, Brandon. Let's wrap it up. We've uh, we've worn out our audience. I can tell a lot of people are like, all right, guys, I got to go to bed. Listen, thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. 
Uh, we'll be back later this month with the Alien Romulus, actually the Alien Show. So we're going to try to come back with that. Well, listen, we thank you guys for hanging out with us. Do me a favor. We still have over 90 people in here. Drop a like before you go. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've got hey, go watch our new Chucky video. Is it out already? It is. It okay, is. I'm going to go watch it. I got to go take a shit. Go watch it. And, uh... <laughs> listen, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. We, the most dangerous show on the internet, Planet Dirty Live. Thank you guys. God bless you. And uh, you guys have a great week. You guys will see me tomorrow. I have some videos coming out. Take care.